welcome to the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2022 here in Bucharest, Romania, where I've got the great pleasure of being joined in the studio today by Mohamed Ibrahim, who is a former Minister for the Post and Telecommunications of Somalia. Mm. Mohamed, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, you're no, no stranger to ITU studios. We've uh, chatted uh, quite a lot in the past. Mm. This is, I believe, your fourth plenipotentiary conference. That's correct. Shows my age. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. How is it different uh, from other plenipotentiary conferences, and, uh, and, and, and why does this matter? This time, I think there's a difference in the structure of the leadership, which is good news. We have a female uh, general secretary after 150 plus years, so it, that is one of the changes. But there are other important issues going on, and. For the first time, we are really more focused on digital transformation, disruption of technology, developing countries, the digital divide. All those things are becoming now more focused, whereby before there was discussions, but now it seems a lot of people understand what's on stake. So that is really what makes this time different. Now, you've uh, swapped your ministerial role for academia now, I understand, mm -hmm. and uh, you're, um, you're based in, in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, obviously, you're getting a whole different perspective there, I'm sure. Now, I wanted to ask you, how will digital transformation and its role in bridging the digital divide transform the planet? Well, thank you. You're right. Actually, I'm no longer in politics now. I moved into academia. And this is an area I actually do a lot of research on this. And we hear a lot of the time through the UN agencies and all these big meetings, global meetings, about digital transformation, financial inclusion, bridging the digital divide, and all these things. But for a long time, it was really a hype. You know, it was academic stuff, just talking about it, writing about it, and so on. But now, it seems people are realizing, really, it's no longer just a talk. Unless we can really show what digital transformation means, to the people who are on the south of the digital divide. And that's what makes things more interesting now. It seems people who were talking about this over the last decade or more now are saying, well, how do we quantify? How do we actually say digital transformation will actually lead into less divide between the south and north in terms of economics? So it's interesting times. I think this time maybe we hopefully we'll get it right. And what about uh the structure of ITU. Do you think it's time to restructure ITU to ensure that it can cope with the speed of global technological developments? It's a very sensitive issue and it's an interesting question. A lot of discussion about this, especially among the African community and, and the African telecommunication people and also the Arab community and so on. I think, to be fair, the current leadership, the structure of the current leadership worked for a while. Maybe the time has come we should revisit this. And already certain things are happening. Why? Why is this important? Because the speed of the technology, the way technology develops, is much, much faster than what the ITU leadership can cope with. And I'm not trying to be negative or critical about this. Hence the need for different way of running the show, different way of leading the ITU. What do I mean by this? For example, if you have someone in the leadership, the secretary general or the, the directors, and they are in the system for eight years as deputies, and then they become the director or the secretary general for another eight years, that's 16 years. That's, that's uh, almost, uh, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, IT uh, time frame, it's a lifetime. That's how much people are spending the technology. So I guess in, in a friendly way, I'm just sending a message saying, look, perhaps that can be revisited can be shortened, and get more young generation. I consider myself now, for example, a senior person. I wouldn't be interested in doing bits and bytes. But if people who are even older than me are still trying to cope with this, maybe it's time to really change a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I'll ask you that question because I know you're uh, that opinion, but we, there is some fresh blood coming into uh, ITU. I mean, I think our, our Deputy Secretary General is probably the youngest Deputy Secretary General uh, that, um, uh, that the ITU has seen. Um, I think uh, also, you know, Dori Bogdan Martin, although she's been with the organization for quite some time, has got, uh, uh, is, is still pretty youthful. Uh, so, uh, um, but is it just youth or is it, uh, is it something else, perspectives that you think uh, uh, need uh, to be looked at? Yeah, the, the thing is, we, we, we know about this field, the ICT and the, the technology and the digital world. It's a very fast-moving area. So I'm not only talking about the directors or people who are hands-on, 
but it's even above that, the directors, the, the board, the governors, that's where you really need to inject new blood. That's where you really need people straight from universities, all those very sharp PhD holders to come in and say, look, this is what's happening. I have the same discussion with, for example, finance ministers or other ministers in Africa. And you want to explain cryptocurrencies to someone who did their PhD in the 50s or 60s. It won't work. You know, whereas you really need someone who is up to date because things are moving. They're moving very fast. So that's really what I mean. It's not, there's nothing wrong with the, the, the old leadership as well. There's a lot of wisdom and a lot of stuff. But it's just that sometimes we need to also time it and say, look, uh, things are really moving too fast for the current leadership. That's what I was trying to say. Right, because we, the institutional knowledge, of course, is extremely important. But I don't know whether you know this, but here, actually, uh, at the ITU Planning Potential Conference, we also have Generation Connect. We've got young people here for the first time uh, that uh, are really injecting this, uh, this new blood. Uh, and we've got uh, major uh, you know, sort of young influencers as well mm -hmm. commenting and, uh, and looking at the whole, uh, uh, at the whole planning potentiary conference. So hopefully that will spread itself, spread the message across and, and, uh, yeah. uh, and influence also the conversations that are happening here, do you think? Yeah, no, no, we, we had this conversation in different platforms before. It, it's it's the, the way, the, the cue, how it, does it actually work? I'll just give you one quick example. If you want to talk about um, let's speak of um, 5G or some other technology. The ITU is standard. We're still working through it. You have the study groups, you have all these people trying to set the standard. In the meantime, the telecos out there in the US or Europe, they're already doing it. So they're saying, look, you guys worry about your standards, but we really won't wait for you. We're moving on. The same thing with the financial side where you have the cryptos and what have you. It's already happening. The governments are still trying to legislate. And this is really where my area of interest is. How do you shorten that time? Because if you want to lead, you have to be in the front. You cannot lead from the back. That, that won't work. So I guess that's what I'm trying to explain. Well, let's hope that ITU can stay ahead of the curve and, uh, and, and fulfill its, uh, its needs and expectations. But Mohammed, thank you so much for being with us in the studio again. Uh, I'm not sure whether we'll, we'll catch up again that soon, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure whether you'll be at another Plenty of Potential Conference, but if you are, you're more than welcome to come and join us here and, and, and share your insights. But thank you very much for joining you're us today. You're welcome, you're welcome. Well, we, we're writing a lot of things now, so in sort of being on, on camera, probably people can also read what we're writing, but I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks very much indeed. Mm -hmm.